This week's video is brought to you by tabletopheroes.co.uk for all your miniature and board gaming supply needs. And by Legend Games, resin scenery and bases. In this video I'm going to paint some resin terrain and bases and show you how to zazz them up a bit. Hi friends and welcome back to the Cyber Haggis, the Savoury Cyborg. This week I've got some plastic models and I've got some resin models to review and paint. So from tabletopheroes.co.uk I have been given this blister pack of Reaper Bones Black Fantasy Miniatures. The difference between the Reaper Bones Black and the previous Reaper sort of white plastic miniatures you got is that supposedly this uh, new mixture is a bit more hard wearing and gives better detail. So let's get in and have a quick look at these guys. Now these are the Women of Dreadmere. So first up we have an old woman with a broom. I think she's got quite a lot of nice detail there, I would say. It's certainly a lot crisper than the previous Reaper plastic miniatures. Uh, next we have got female woodsman. And again, quite a lot of detail there, quite nice. Certainly a lot better than the previous plastic they were made of. They do feel a lot more robust. And finally we have got a female assassin. Now these are really clean, crisp miniatures. There is a bit of a mold line there. There's not much in the way of flash or anything. I think they're definitely a step up from the previous uh, offering of plastic miniatures from Reaper. And it's also nice to see some non-hero type miniatures, so just an old woman with a broom. Uh, nice to have just villagers and things, to be honest with you. And our friends at tabletopheroes.co.uk have got a range of these uh, Reaper Bones Black miniatures. You could use them for your 28mm uh, fantasy armies or for Dungeons & Dragons or your role-playing game of choice. And next up, let's get these guys out of the way. We have got some pieces from Legend Games. Now what Legend Games do is they make resin, scenery and bases. So they've given me a selection of these to review and paint and just show off really. Some are prototypes, some are already available in the links in the description. What I've done with these, just to make them show up a bit more on camera, I've spray painted them grey and I've given them a black uh, watered down paint wash just so it shows up a bit better. Uh, first up we've got this. It is a campfire. I guess you could add that into a scenic piece or onto, or just use it flat out as a base if you wanted, I guess. Uh, then we've got, and this is quite nice, a treasure chest spilling gold coins everywhere. Um, you could use that as a objective marker or again, just flat out as a base. And we've got the standard skulls for the skull throne. That's quite nice. A lot of detail on that, a lot of skulls. I really like that piece. And we've got just standard hex flagstone base. A couple of these ones, so larger sort of flagstone round bases. Quite nice, quite 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 a lot of depth on the detail there. Uh, we've got a Floorboard square. Now what I really like about this is the amount of detail that's in the wood grain there. I really like that. I think that's going to paint up really well. Uh, then we've got this ruined wall piece. And what I like about this is that there are no uh, era specific scenic items on there. And a lot of the time you get a piece like this, they put like a a shield on it that makes it look really specific to an era. For this, you could use this fantasy, World War II, modern, whatever. Next up, we have got another base, or it could be an objective marker, I guess. A piece of wood, mushrooms growing on there. I quite like that. That's cool. Again, very nice depth on the wood grain. And now we've got a door. Again, the depth on the wood grain is really nice. And what's good about it is it's two-sided. Sometimes you get these resin doors and it's only on one side, but that's cool. 
It's got like an outer door skull on it and then a sort of inner door. And then we've got three barrels. So this one has got, I don't know, could be coins again in there. And then we've got just two sort of, ooh, focus. Two barrels there. And then finally, we've got a, put that the right way around, treasure chest. Again, there's a really nice wood grain, really subtle wood grain effect on there. Quite nice. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take some of these pieces and I'm going to paint them up. And then we'll have a look what they look like once they've had a nice paint job on onto them. So let's get going. I'm not going to bore you and show you how I painted all of these exactly. I just used some basic techniques. I base coated with a primary colour. Then some of them I gave a wash to. For example, with the gold in the treasure chest, I base coated that with brass because I actually think that's a nicer colour than some of the golds I've got. Then I gave it a watered down ink wash, a brown wash, then highlighted up with, highlighted up with brass again and then added some more of the golds into that brass mix just to brighten it up a bit. For the wooden textured areas, the wood grain sculpting was so really nice that I wanted to capture that as much as possible. So I highlighted around the wood grain just to really bring it out, really make it pop. For the cobblestone base, I looked at a couple of pictures of actual cobblestone and it tends to be all sort of different colours, sometimes different textures, and then they wear at different rates. So you get different patches on each of the cobblestones. So I've painted each of the different sections of the cobblestones a slightly different colour and then instead of just uh, highlighting up to around the edges I've done it in a sort of feathering scratchy pattern to make it look more worn. What I'm doing here with the ruins is just dry brushing instead of a standard line highlight. Uh, this is really effective on this kind of terrain piece because you want it to look sort of battered and bruised and like it's been demolished and dry brushing gives this sort of scrappy wrecked effect i'm also dry brushing around the base uh, to make it look like there's a lot of debris and powder and dust around it what i've done with the skull base is i've used some of the techniques in my previous videos you might want to go back and watch them for more detail but basically i have base coated with a skeleton bone um, color then washed it with uh, raw umber and now I'm just highlighting back up with the skeleton bone and increasing amounts of white. Now that we've gone through that speed painting session, uh, unfortunately I've ran out of time so I haven't been able to paint all the pieces, uh, but I will get to them at some point and show them off on the Cyber Haggis Facebook page. I'm going to show you what I've done with these pieces. So first up, I've got one of the cobblestone bases. As you can see, I've tried to give it different colours, make it look scratched and battered and old. I'll paint it up really nicely. Next, we've got this barrel. Oh, focus. I've made that look like it's full of gold coins. And it's kind of gone a bit mouldy at the bottom. Um, we've got the wooden floorboard base. And that's painted up really nicely. I really like how that's came out. The uh, grain in the uh, resin mould there has made that really easy to paint. Made it really nice. Tree stump with the mushrooms. I like that. The mushrooms are really cool. It's a really cool addition. It really looks like a properly mouldy old rotten tree stump. A scatter train, the old wall. Um, there was a skull in there that I hadn't noticed before, which is quite cool. I've given made it look like it's uh, all broken and cracked plaster in the back there. Mainly dry brushing to make it look like that. The skull base, I really like the way that's come out. That's so much detail on that. It's so cool. I really like that base. 
And then, and this is the one I'm most happy with, the treasure pile. So again, there's so much detail. I, had to ind I felt I had to individually pick out each of those gold coins to do it justice. Obviously, I've put some silver in there just to mix it up a little bit. Originally, what I had planned was that I was going to take some of these Reaper Bones models and use them on these bases just to show the two of them combined. However, this is a bit of a problem. So the base that they're on is really quite tough. And I've cut into it and it was so tough that I don't think I'm going to be able to get it down to a level where I can actually say stick that on there without her being floating off the ground like that, which is a bit disappointing. Um, but what I would normally do with this type of miniature, with a big base like that, is get as much of that off as possible and stick it onto a base, a, a, a blank base, essentially, and cover that over with some sort of texture or substrate. Um, so, best laid plans of mice and men, etc. What I'm going to do now, though, instead, is I'm going to zazz these bases up a bit. I'm going to take my terrain bits and my substrates and things and uh, scatter grass and etc, etc. And I'm going to put it onto these bases just to show you how you can take these up to the next level. They're already awesome. I also I already really like these, but you can go further on this and I'm going to show you how. So here we go. First one I'm going to zazz up is the easiest one, cobblestone base one. So what you often see with gaps and pavements or cobblestone is just grass and plants and flowers growing up in between the cracks. So I have got some uh, static grass, which has gotten a bit contaminated um, with my uh, swamp material, but oh well, there you go. And I've also got some plants some flowers, nice bluebell sort of things. And I'm gonna stick some of that just in between the gaps in some of the sections here, so. Just gonna speed through this. I put some glue in amongst the cracks there and I added in some of the grass and then I added in some of those bluebells. And there we have, it's a nice simple addition. But, um, let's try. try. I look good. Right, for the treasure, I thought I would make that look like it was coming out of the desert sands. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some sort of more of these sticky foliage doodads on and then put some sand down. So I'm just going to put a bit of just a dot of PVA on the back of there. They, they do come sticky, um, but I'm never particularly convinced it's a fantastic um, glue. Warp speed again, Mr. Sulu. What I'm about to do now is I'm just going to stick on another one of those tufts, just for a bit of variation. And now I'm just covering the base with some PVA and then I'm going to pour some sand on top of that just to cover it all up. Now you can leave the sand as it is, which is what I like to do because it gives that sort of natural colour to it. But you can also paint it if you like. If you are going to paint it, I would recommend putting it on before you undercoat the model. I also recommend you pouring it onto some sort of base or folded piece of paper so that you can catch all the sand because otherwise it goes absolutely everywhere. I was putting on the sand. Some of it went into the treasure chest and onto the pile of gold and I actually thought it looked quite good so I've stuck some more onto there. Um, obviously the underlying PVA is still wet as you can see there but that will look much better once it's dried. One thing I'm going to add directly to this are some of these. So these are nail art gems and they're really good size for uh, gemstones in amongst treasure and things. So we can just about see that and get the light onto it. 
teeny tiny thing. It'll make a very good emerald. Just add it directly on with a little bit of glue. I'm going to add on that emerald and then I went and added in a second one, a ruby, into the main treasure chest again just to make things up a bit. And then we've got a ruby and an emerald. Let's stick that to one side to dry. Next up I'm going to do this piece. I don't think it needs a huge amount added more onto it. I think some dead grass should do the job really. Just the same again, added some glue, added some of the dead grass and added some tufts as well. You really don't need to go overboard. That's all that needs really just to make it look a bit more fancy. You could keep going but I think if you find a good stopping point Stop. Use your instincts. Finally, I'm going to do the rotten tree stump. I'm going to put a base layer of my, once again, patterned and swamp material. It's pretty good. I'm going to leave that to dry for a second and then add some more bits and pieces to it. Well, that's dry, so I've got some pieces I've really been looking forward to using. So I got these from a company called Diorama Presepe, or possibly Diorama Presepe. Um, they're all sort of dried plants, so I think they'll look really good and nice and swampy on this base. So I think I'll put some of these brown ones on first. I added these dried plant bits in in the same way that I had with the previous sort of artificial grasses and things. So I just added a little dot of glue to them and glued them in place where I thought they looked appropriate and good. I'd never really worked with this sort of dried material before but it was really easy to work with and it was actually quite easy to shape which I was surprised by. And they look really good in the end product. I've got some more plans for these dried pieces, mainly for swamp terrain for Bloodmoor, so stay tuned to the channel because in the future I'm going to do a big swamp piece. There we go, that's the plant material. Now I'm going to take some of the still water, the Vallejo still water that I use. I'm just going to soggy this up a little bit. And soggy it I did. So what I did was I just added a little bit of the still water to my palette. Not my painting palette, that would be silly. And I've just put it on an old brush. You don't want to use a new brush for this. Just use an old wrecked brush or a cheap brush. Then just dab it on to the scenery piece wherever you think it's going to look good. If you manage to get some onto the wood or onto any of the uh, rock sections, it doesn't matter. It's a swamp. Water and sogginess is just going to go everywhere anyway. And there we go. I think that looks really good. I'm really happy with the way that's come out. Let's all leave these to dry for a bit and then we'll come back and we'll look at the final results. And here we are with the final product. I'm really happy with the way these have come out. The one I'm most happy with though is definitely the dead tree. I think that looks really cool, suitably swampy. The plants look really good. It was really nice and simple. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. Some nice resin scenery and some nice easy ways to zazz it up. I hope you've enjoyed that video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to watch more videos on painting, scenery, miniatures and just general wargaming, then please consider subscribing. I'll speak to you again soon. Take care.